Hi, this is lesson 8.5, interval of convergence. And we're going to use the ratio test to sort some of this out. So remember the ratio test said that if I take the next term, put it over my now term, and I do the limit as n goes to infinity of that, and that number is less than 1. That limit comes out to be less than 1. That tells me then my series converges. So what we want to do is find out for which values of x does this series converge because we do have these um, series with x in them. So we have to find two things. One is the radius of convergence. The radius of convergence of a power series is the distance from the center C at which the series will converge. And so, for instance, if I converge on this interval right here, the radius would just be one half of that full interval. Now, if we talk about the interval of convergence, the interval of convergence, we're going to have to do something a little bit different. It would be this full thing, but you also have to check each endpoint. So that's the key to that one. So let's see how this works for number one. If I take the sum of all these terms, 2 to the n, x to the n, all over n. I want to put this into the ratio test to see what happens for us. So if I take the limit as n goes to infinity of the next term, 2 to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, all over n plus 1, then I'm going to divide by this term right here. Well, when I divide by that term, that means multiply. So this is going to be n all over 2 to the n, x to the n. And i got to make sure that I remember my absolute values. And then I want to say that this is less than 1. Okay, so we were trying to find the x values for which this will converge. So let's see how this pans out once we simplify. This one right here has one more term than here, so that would just be a 2 that we're left with. This one here would have one more term than there, so that would just be an x that we're left with. And then we have the n over n plus 1. Well, what is the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1? Well, that's going to equal 1, so that's just going to be multiplied by this thing right here. So we, our interval of convergence is just going to be the absolute value of this, just like we did before. And that would be less than 1. I guess it's a little bit different because we don't have the... Um, difference there. So quick review on this again. I got 2 to the n plus 1 all over 2 to the n. That just leaves 1 extra 2. I got x to the n plus 1 over x to the n. That just leaves an x. And then I'm left with the n over n plus 1. Well, I'm finding the interval of convergence dealing with the x. So this thing just becomes 1. And so when that happens, the 2 times x is what we really want to look at for this. Now to wrap this up, I'm going to take 2x is in between negative 1 and 1. And then so x is in between negative 1 half and 1 half. Now here's one of the keys is that we have to check. We're going to have to check the left endpoint to see now if we include this. So we're going to check x equal to negative 1 half. And then we're also going to check x equal to 1 half plug those in and see if we do get a series that converges. We might have to use one of our previous tests to do that too. So let's see how this works. So I started writing this now. So I took this right here. And with my original, I'm going to take this x value and I'm going to plug in the negative 1 half. So that's what I did right here. And so then this blue stuff is what I had originally up here. Then if I look at this, now i got to determine does this series converge for this negative one-half when I plug it in there? Well, the answer would be yes, because if I look at multiplying these two together, I get negative one. Negative one to the nth all over n. That would be an alternating series with a harmonic, and so we would end up with the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n is equal to zero, and the absolute value of the terms decrease, so therefore it converges by the alternating series tests. Now let's check this other endpoint. 
So when I check this other endpoint, do exactly the same thing. Take n equal to 1 to infinity. I think that you, now you can see that this would be 2 times 1 half, so that would be 1 to the n over n. This is simply the harmonic. So this is a p series, p equal to 1. This diverges. So in conclusion, my interval in, of um, convergence is going to include the negative 1 half. It will not include the 1 half. So I put a wrong bracket on it. And then my radius of convergence is just going to be one half of that interval, so it's just going to be one half. Okay, so a couple steps here. We have to use the ratio test and make sure that we're less than or equal to one and then figure out which values of x will give us a convergence for a certain uh, sequence series. And then the other steps are to check your endpoints. And when you check your endpoints, see if it works uh, by your other tests and then plug it in and include it. If it does uh, converge, don't include it if it diverges. Number two. Okay, so let's look at this one. Now, when you look at this one, we said that the ratio test a lot of times works well if we have exponents and we also have factorials. But this one's unique too because I can go ahead and write this n equal to zero to infinity of x plus one all over two raised to the n. So yes, I could have used the ratio test for this, but that gets uh, pretty involved. So if you can think better, I think you should think better. So if I look at this, I see a geometric series test. So if it's a geometric series test, all I'm looking at is x plus 1 all over 2. Absolute value has to be less than 1. So we circumvented a lot here. So then x plus 1 over 2 is in between negative 1 and 1. And then finishing this up. So figuring this out, I get x in between negative 3 and 1. Since this is geometric series, I know that the endpoints will not work, and so I don't have to test the endpoints here. So your interval of convergence is simply, as I stated there, negative 3 to 1. And then your radius of convergence is just going to be an interval of 2. Now, what's the easy way to do this, too? You can go and take the difference of these two numbers, which would be negative 3 minus 1, all divided by 2. And that would give you your radius of convergence. So take your two endpoints, subtract them, so you're finding all the overall length between the two, and then divide by 2, which splits it in two to give me the radius. If you want a formula, that's it. Okay, let's look at number 3 now. Number three, I have the n factorial and x to the n, so this looks like a good candidate for us. So if we go to the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 factorial, so that's one more number than n factorial, and then x to the n plus 1 all over. Oh, we don't have all over anything. So if I multiply this, this is going to be actually dividing by n factorial times x to the n. So if I simplify this, and don't forget absolute value, I want this less than 1. Uh, so if I simplify this, I'm going to get n plus 1 here. And then I'm going to get x here. So I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing. And I need this less than 1. So now let's think about this for a little bit. As n goes to infinity... This is just going to keep on going off to infinity. So regardless of what a fixed value of x is going to be, this will go off to infinity or negative infinity, depending upon what x is. There's only one case for x, though, where we are limited and just stay in one place. Do you know what that is? Well, that would be x equal to 0. So that's a simple point that we do have. And so then my interval of convergence is just going to be x equal to 0. My radius of convergence is just going to be 0 as well. So when we're, we're convergent for just one single point, my radius of convergence will just be 0. Right? 
Okay, number four, maybe you want to stop this and go ahead and try this one on your own. Thanks for coming back. Okay, let's see what we have to do now. So I wrote this out here, and this needs to be less than one. What happens when I simplify this exponent? It's going to be, and sometimes you need to write these things out and get used to them. Even I have to write them out sometimes now, now and then too to figure them out. So 2n plus 2 factorial times 2n factorial all over x to the 2n. So I'm looking at the absolute value of that. And the limit as n goes to infinity. So if I take my x's now, this just means that I got one more, uh, I'm sorry, two more x's than I do down here. So when those cancel off, I'm left with an x squared. And then for this one, this would be 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, 2n factorial. I could write that out, but it's just going to be 2n plus 2 and 2n plus 1. 2n, plus, 2n factorial on down will cancel out with this one. So this is all what I'm left with for that. So what happens to this denominator as we go on? As n goes to infinity, this denominator will keep on getting larger and larger and larger. And for whatever value of x that I have, sooner or later, this denominator will take it over and go past it. And so for any fixed x, this thing will always converge. So the interval of convergence will be from negative infinity to infinity. And then my radius of convergence will also be, well, it'll just be infinity. Okay, because half of infinity, infinity is infinity, yeah, whatever. Okay, there it is. Now, here's the last note, which I think is kind of important. In the last unit, we found intervals of convergence for the geometric series. It was not necessary to check the endpoints, as we found out in number two, because the geometric series diverges when r is equal to 1. However, the ratio test is inclusive when a ratio is 1. Therefore, when using the ratio test to find the intervals of convergence, it is necessary to check endpoints using one of the other tests. Although it is not necessary to ask when we ask for the interval or the radius of convergence. So radius of convergence, you don't have to test endpoints. But interval of convergence, you do have to test endpoints if it's using the ratio test. All right, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for listening, and take care. Be good.